Hey traders and investors, a very warm welcome to you. So in this video, we're gonna talk about using price statistics to make better trading decisions. Stay tuned. Hey guys, a very warm welcome to you. Okay, so we're gonna look at using price statistics to make better trading decisions. This is a good one. This is something that I use, it's something that I know a lot of other traders use. It gives you two main things. Number one, it gives you the confidence to hold the trades longer. And number two, it gives you the confidence to pull the trigger on your existing setup or strategy. Let's have a look at it, let's get started. Right, number one. And it'll become clear what I talk about in a second when I mean statistics. The average or expected move in a specific time. So what we're doing here is we're taking and we're analyzing or we're getting data, we're either doing it ourselves in Excel, or we're getting it from other resources, it doesn't matter. But we're getting specific statistics on the market we're trading. For example, we would say here, hey, the expected move during the trading day is 100 pips. That could just be something as simple as an average true range, guys. This is the starting point of it. The average true range of the day is 100 pips. Hey, guess what? You're on the end of a trend. It's up, it's done 80 pips already. You're still long. You're, you, you, why not hold for the full 100? The expected move is 100. You're in the trade. You've got a nice bit of meat in the, on the bone already. You've already got a bit of profit. Why not hold it for the last 20? Because the expected move, the most likely move, is 100 on the day. It's only done 80 and you're long. Stay with the thing. Do you get the point? You're holding for the expected. Is it always going to do 100? No. It's, could it sometimes do 80? Of course. It's only an expected. But the point is you can then look at that in different time frames and you'll have the win behind you in terms of stats. So you could look at it on a 15-minute chart. So a 15-minute chart, you say, hey, the first 15 minutes, this DAX always or expected to do 15, uh, 50 ticks, for example. 50 ticks in the first 50, opening 15 minutes, as an example. You then see the market push down 10 ticks, double bottom. You see a strategy, a setup that you like to trade, bullish engulfing, double bottom, fake outs to lows, or whatever it may be. You get long. The market's already done 10 ticks range and then starts to push up through the highs and it's five, six minutes of trade already. You know you've got the full 50 potentially there. You don't need to be cutting it when it's got a 30 point range. You hold it for that full 50 if you're in a trade setup and strategy that you like already. That's the point. It's not a, it's not a cure rule. This is something to bolt into a specific strategy already that allows you to hold the trade for longer, it allows you to stick with the trade and say, hey, you know what? The full 50 is about to happen. It's likely to happen. We've done 40, let me hold this thing. And vice versa, you can say, hey, I see a great little bull flag here, but we're 10 minutes into trade and it's already up 50. It's already done a 50 point range. So I'm not gonna take it because I'm now, uh, I'm now expecting a bit of an outlier. I'm expecting outside of the normal distribution. I'm expecting at the, at the, at the other end of the bell curve. So. I may be cautious about it. Of course, there are times when you're gonna take it, but the point is markets will generally do what they do normal, they're normal conditions. And those conditions, by the way, if you're doing these stats, you don't wanna go back years and years, it's an absolute waste of time. You wanna go the current market conditions. So if you've been in a nice bull run for the past kind of five weeks, use five weeks. If you've changed condition in the past week, just use a week. You have to adjust that those statistics you're taking with the current market conditions. And this is super, super powerful stuff, guys. All right, number two, stats on the time of day, highs and lows. You can run stats or you can find stats online that say, you know what, Euro uh, forms a new high 70% of the time at lunchtime, for example, or the new high or new low for the day is always formed in the first, is most likely formed, never always, most likely formed in the first hour of European trade on the Euro US dollar, whatever it may be. The point is you can then take that and say, well, there's no point in me looking for a fresh low in this when we look reasonably bullish, we've done a low in the morning and you know, you might get a setup that says, okay, it's a quite a good short, but you might say, well, actually the odds are we're not going to take out the low because we've done the low already. I take in other information on that, that we're quite bullish today, this and that and the other. So I might pass on it or vice versa. I might be in a trade and say, hey, I think that's the low of the day. I could put my stop under there because everything lines up, the statistics are lining up and my setup's lining up. That's the important thing. So I'm going to hold on to the trade. 
Um, another thing guys, stats on the day of the week ranges extremes. This is an interesting one because often you'll find that certain days of the week are more volatile than the others. For example, a Wednesday on pound might be more volatile. A Thursday might be more volatile. You can get these stats, like I say, online or do them yourself in Excel. Or you might say, hey, listen, you know, most of the time or in the, in the last two, two months or whatever it may be, we have made the high of the week on a Friday. And so with that information, you could be armed going into Friday saying, hey, I want to align myself long. I don't really want to be lining myself short because for the last however many weeks this is what has happened, I'm going to use that as a bit of a guide, a little extra layer of edge and say, hey, we're probably going to close on a high on a Friday. Where's the weekly high? Yes, well within a range of the daily range. We could easily take that out. I need to be positioned looking for a long, okay, looking for my bull flag, looking for my pullback trade, whatever it is, playing off that thesis but adding your shorter time frame strategy into it. All right, seasonal stats, not something I particularly look at much, but I know a lot of commodity traders do. The seasonality affecting the commodities, whether it's uh, crops, agriculture, whether it's consuming crude oil, whether it's all that kind of stuff. You can go and there's some great resources online, just check out on Google. But again, the kind of thing where you can use seasonality and say, hey, actually there's a long bias to this month because of whatever it may be, whether harvest season or whatever it may be, consumption season, holiday season for fuel, whatever it may be. The point is you can use that as a little bit of an edge to at least guide you. Maybe you don't even use an edge as such. You just say, okay, well, I'm going to look for longs. There's enough trades out there and opportunities that I can I can say, well, I want to filter out longs and try, I want to filter out shorts and just trade longs, excuse me. So that's just one way of doing it. And it's such an easy, simple thing to do. It makes your life easier and gives you more confidence that when you're in a trade, you can hold it because, hey, I've got these statistics behind me that say this is a good thing to be in. All right, number five, prior day stats. So that could be something like, hey, if the prior day's range has been ultra extreme and we've closed at highs or we've closed at lows or we've closed at this and that and the other, the next day is likely to do this. Again, you're framing your day's trade. Let's say yesterday was a really strong trend day that closed on highs. The stats might say, hey, we normally will take out the prior, the prior day's highs and then we'll chop around at lunchtime. If those stats say that, what do you do? Of course, you might not want to take the breakout trade. You might take a dip trade for a push to highs that you close then in advance of the chop, whatever the stat may be. But the point is then you can position yourself around it. And don't make the mistake, guys. Well, I'm not saying here is just take these stats and just trade on that. Use that as a, as a starting point to filter long, to filter your position, to filter what you're looking for, and then still add your strategy, your setup, your chart pan into that but you're using that as a guide and that's the, that's the key and that's like a really very powerful thing all right uh what i've got here after extreme move stats you know sometimes we have c stats where these are these are getting less powerful as we're walking as we're moving down here by the way but after extreme move stats often we'll see stuff that says hey if uh, we have an extreme you know move in in crude oil or whatever the next day does this or the next day does that and there's loads of stats out there i don't like these as much but again you know if you can all it does is, is reducing the boundaries and reducing the kind of what you're looking for i still find it quite helpful and uh, number seven holiday stats that'd be things like hey the day before holiday the, the range is normally you know 50 percent of the range or the volume is normally this or normally that at least you can use that maybe just to stay out of the market and say hey listen you know what i'm not going to i'm a day trader i'm not going to get involved now in or i'm a swing trader i'm going to cut my position the day before holiday because statistics show that hey we don't normally do this or you can use them you know stats that say hey the, the run after christmas or up to christmas or all this kind of stuff are normally bullish so maybe you don't necessarily position for that but if you've been short and you want to take profits maybe you want to take profits before that that week before Christmas or if you're long maybe say well, I'm going to take profits actually you know what I'll hold it until the start of the new year because statistics show that that gives me a little bit of extra you know extra extra juice on the trade I'll do it that way it's all just adding weight to your existing trading plan and strategy guys and this is such a good stuff it's powerful stuff I encourage you to check out and do a bit more digging anything you've got any information you want to share any questions you've got stick them in the comment section below thumbs up if you like this kind of stuff much appreciate thank you for your support subscription below as well if you have haven't yet already for more videos like this from me. Take care. Bye-bye.